going to cover section 5.3, integration by substitution. Uh, lecture cover on, what is today? April 27th. Thursday. Senior ditch day. <laughs> we know where you guys are. Um, okay. So, what we're going to do here is look just a little demonstration. So, if we consider these two formulas that we have here, uh, for notation, they both mean the same thing, right? You're taking the derivative of a function composition. When I say composition, think about when we used to do things like this back in pre-calculus, which was like f of g of x. Now, the difference here is that we're using this um, x, our function that will be on the outside, and g of x will be the one on the inside. Now, if we do that, we will take the derivative of function f, which we have that notation, and it will be the derivative of that function for the same value, which is g of x. But then we have to get the derivative of g of x, like using chain rule. And so that will result in uh, times the derivative of g of x, which will be that. And that's what we have here written here. So don't really need to copy that. I was just explaining how they got. Now, if we consider both notations and we take the integral on both sides, um, so we will get something like this, the integral of f prime g of x minus g prime of x and then for notation purposes, dx. And on the left side here, we're going to have the integral of d, dx, of all this stuff here. Okay, and so here what will happen, um, derivative, integral, they will undo each other. So then we could just say that the answer for this side will be um, f of g of x plus c. Remember how that constant is important. Now here on this side, uh, while we take the integral, we will get the following. And that's going to be the integral of f of g of x, g prime of x, dx. So the only thing that I've changed here is just the notation. Yeah? It cancels out. Which one? Like the, uh, the prime. Yes. So then we go back to the original function. Thank you, Sean. Why wouldn't they do both of them? So this one and this one. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, actually, yes. That is since F is the untied derivative. Yeah, uh, I'm not very convinced about that, but yes. Okay, then um, what we're going to do is consider this part right here, this g of x. We're going to call it u. Let u equal. And so if you notice the title of the section, what is it? Integration by substitution. So this is the substitution part right here. And once we do the example with the real functions, then we'll make more sense to you. Okay, so we do that. And so um, if we were to, just so you guys know what's going to happen, if we substitute u into the function, f of u is equivalent to the f of g of x, right? That's why we can do it. 
So what we're saying, what we're going to say is that this whole part is going to be the integral instead of all of this is just going to be the integral of f of u. All of it. So we're substituting g of x with u. Like that. Okay. Now, if we have, going back to this part, if we take the derivative of u with respect to x, we will get g prime of x. So we get the derivative of We're going to do several examples. So don't, don't be terrified. Yes. Okay. So then from here, if this is just like an algebra step that we use, and uh, dx, if you consider dx a term, you could say is dividing to du, right? Like think about dx together as a variable and du together as a variable. So if I take dx to this other side, what operation would it be, would it be doing? Multiplying, very good. So du is equal to g prime x dx. And for th those of you who stayed yesterday for the review, there was a problem that had a little bit of that. Like you have to manipulate the dx and the du. Okay. okay, so it will make more sense today. Um, after today. Okay, so why do we do that? Well, it's because... If you guys look at this part, what do we have? G prime of x dx, right? So that means that right here, we're missing that. Okay. So remember, integral, same thing, we have it here. Instead of f of g of x, we're substituting that with f of u. And then we're still missing this part, g prime of x dx. And where are we going to get that from? We get it from here. So we're just going to use d. Now that formula is here. Now what, why am I showing you that? Because if I just tell you we're going to do that and substitute, you're going to be questioning why can we do that? Well, that is why. Because if it's the rule to do the um, derivative or integral of function composition. Okay. Now let's do an example. So we'll start with a very easy one. What I'm going to say is x squared, let's say, let u equal x squared plus 1, this part right here. Not the, don't worry about the exponents, just worry about that. Then if I take du of dx. You guys know how to take the derivative of this very easy, right? Yeah. Super so two easy. X. So 2x, that's it. So then, if I take this part dx to the other side, it will be multiplying, right? So then du will equal 2x dx. Yes, are we okay with that part? Mm -hmm. okay. I think you should move. Oh. Okay, so then from there, what I'm going to do is now substitute. So we will take the integral, and then instead of all this stuff in red, 
we're just going to say the integral of u, because that's what we're saying, that x squared plus 1 is u. So we say the integral of u, but then we have to use this exponent, this to the power, this u. And then what else is here? 2x dx. Where are we going to get that from? D. D. Right here, right? It's right here. So we substitute the dv over it and that's this. Now sometimes, you'll see what the examples. Not all examples are the same, okay? That's why I made the handout, because so we can get more examples done. So then instead of 2x dx, we replace that with dv. Okay. So then here, we know how to take that integral. What's the question on your quiz, right? It's going to be u to the what power? 50 first. 50 first, 51, Over. divided by? 50 first. Very good. What am I missing? Plus, plus c. Plus c. Okay. That's the answer. That's it. That's all. Now we go back and plug that in. Well, substitute that for you, I should say. Like, put it back in the answer. And so it will be, um, instead of u, we're going to replace that with x squared plus 1. So x squared plus 1 to the power 51 over 51 plus c. Yes. No idea on the quiz. I forgot to see this on the. Oh! Uh, you really forgot all the C? Oh that means he gets everything wrong. Right? Everything's wrong. Okay. All right. Now, that was a very easy example. But let me tra retrace the steps, okay? So we start with this function and we're like, oh my god, power 50. We have x squared here. What should I do? So you try to always take the function that is kind of like intimidating you, and that's what you're going to use as u. Not all the time, but you do that, and then you have to take the derivative of that one because you have, you're going to have to somehow make up for this dx right here. So then if you take the derivative of this part, it will just be using power rule 2x, right? The derivative of 1 is just 0. So now with functional notation, you manipulate that so that it fits what you have here. So sometimes integration by substitution is not going to work. And then that's when you need to do other types of integration that are taught in Cal 2. One is called integration by parts. Another one is integration by partial fraction decomposition. Another one is integration by trigonometric substitution. So this one right here, take the derivative, and then you just substitute. And you take the derivative of this quantity because it's a lot easier, right? You just add one to the exponent, divide by that. And then uh, you do substitution again. Yes? Can you just like stick with the original one and act as x squared plus 1 is like just x or something and solve it like that, add 1 over 51? Yes, I mean you don't have to is. you don't have to do that, but what about your two x? What would you do about that? Get rid of it. You can't just get rid of it. You have to somehow prove that the two x was um that you took the two x into account. Because if you have if your question is this strong, yeah. X squared plus one to the power of fifty. If it was just that, then you just do x squared plus 1 over 50. Yeah, you, don't, you ignore the 2x, but the 2x is there. So that's why you have to use substitution. Um, what? What do you mean the 2x is in the answer? The so 2x dx is not the answer. No, no, it's like where you have. It's part of the question. You said x squared plus 1 to the power 51 over 51 plus c, right? 
right there that it's like doesn't have like the plus two x or something. Like words of drugs, two x, the x now. Like it's not even out there. Because that was substituted with oh, DU. Yeah, yeah. This 2x dx was substituted with du. Now, why do you need to have du? Because you're integrating with respect to u. So that's why you have to have du somehow in there. So if we have. OK, let's look at the guidelines here. Maybe that will answer serve some questions. So step one, look for some composition f of g of x, so in this case our f of g of x, we could say that one of the functions um, was the x to the power 50, and then the g of x was the x plus 1, right? Is that what it was? x squared plus 1, sorry. Like that. So, f of g of x was the f of x squared plus 1. And so if we substitute that in here, we get x squared plus 1 to the power 50. So that's why that is a function composition. So you look for some composition, and then um, that you assign one of those to be u. So right here, this part is u, and that will be substituting the g of x. Then you take the derivative of that, which will be, if you don't want to write it in this terms, du dx, you could just say du, take the derivative of that, and then say you're deriving with respect to x. So these two are equivalent. Sometimes it's more convenient to use this one. Sometimes it's more convenient to use this one. Sometimes we're going to leave a constant over here, depending on what we need. OK. Now, remember, this may not be possible. And that's what when you need to use other integration techniques. OK. Now, if you are successful in step one, then try to evaluate the resulting integral in terms of u, and that's why we will need that du somewhere there. Uh, if you are successful here, then you replace u with g of x, so like a back substitution to express your final answer in terms of x. So let's do another example. Right here, what do you guys think u should be? X plus sine of x plus 9. Plus nine. Actually, only x plus 9. So we're going to let u equal x plus 9. So now du dx is going to be what? What's the, no, no. Just look at this one here. Don't worry about sign. 1. 1. That's it. Just 1. Oh, yeah. The derivative of 9 is? Yeah. So now, if if you guys notice, I need to somehow replace dx, right? So then if I take the dx that is here across, it's going to be multiplied. So then du is equal to 1 times dx. Or simply, I could just say, du equals dx, and that's it. So what am I going to replace for dx? Du. du, that's it. And what am I going to replace for u? I'm sorry, for x plus 9? u. Okay, so, so sine of u, uh -huh. so the integral of sine of u, and then I have to replace dx, so I'm going to use du. Now, we know what is the integral, right? So we what is the integral of sine? Negative cosine. Negative cosine. Of what? Of uh, u. Yeah. Of u. Wait. Plus.
Okay, then we just go back and replace that with an index. So negative cosine of x plus 9 yeah. plus c. Now, do you have to show all of this if you were doing multiple choice? Yeah. No. You could just do it like you were saying, like, well, can you just like do it in your head that that would be the answer? Yes, you can. But if it was a free response, I would show work. Yes. Hold on. Unless it was a calculator free response. You don't have to show it. Say that again. I still don't understand what the dx was. Because you know how it's sine. Which dx? Because it's like sine x plus 9 and then dx. It's a pop, right? Yes. So the dx, the dx right here, yeah, that turned into this dx. one turn into du. And then when you solve for it, like how come you don't do anything? Yeah. 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 Well, I wait. Okay. Let me hear the other questions. Say that again. How come you don't do anything with that when you first solve for it? The du and the dx are just there for notation purposes, so that you always know what are you integrating with respect to. So it's just a little bit of manipulation. Now, this ones are very straightforward, and yes, you can throw them in your head, but uh, they're going to increase in difficulty. Okay, but in the one before that, it said 2x dx. Yes. We just feel like how can we do anything with 2x? Because the whole 2x. The whole 2x dx was replaced with du. So that's why this whole, once we substituted with du, we lost that whole part. Now, sometimes the du is going to be dx by itself. Sometimes du is going to be something times dx. Or sometimes it might be, you'll, you'll see in the other examples. Okay, go and take, just take a three minute break, guys. We're going to continue with problem three. Okay, so uh, what would you guys say that you is? Five minutes. Yes. So then du, oops, du dx is going to be what? One. Just five. Five. Just five. Just five. Okay. Five. But uh, if you guys notice, once we start substituting, it's going to be the integral of the cosine of u. Right? So we already got this part covered. And now we need to substitute dx. So how are we going to do that? Well, if I take this dx across, then this will be 5 times dx, and then here we will have du. This isn't now, what, do I, what should I do with the 5? Uh, so if you guys notice on the problem, we only need dx. So I need to isolate dx, leave it by itself. The 5 is multiplying to dx. So I'll, if I get the 5 back on the left, what is it going to do? Instead of multiplying and dividing, so like that. Now, du divided by 5 is equivalent to 1 fifth times du. Okay, take a few seconds to process what happened. So you guys told me right away u is 5x. We took the derivative of 5x, it is just 5. And then we move the notation dx was dividing on the left, moved it to the right, now it's multiplying here on the right. Now because the problem require, uh, requires us to just substitute dx, not 5 dx, we have to take this 5 back to the left. So instead of multiplying on the right, it's dividing on the left. So how come we didn't do that for this problem? What? How come we didn't do that for this problem? Every problem is different. Every pro with, with practice, that's how you know. Okay, uh, so right here, instead of dx, I'm going to substitute with one fifth times du. Now, what I can do is factor out this one fifth. 
take it to the front of the integral expression. So one-fifth times the integral of cosine u du. Now this is an easy integral that we know by formula, right? Yes? So what's the integral of cosine? Sine. So it will be one-fifth times sine of u plus c. Now what are we going to do? Back substitution. So we're going to substitute what u is equivalent to from here. The answer will be after back substitution since u is equal to 5x, right? That's what we said at the beginning. This answer here will be one-fifth of sine of 5x plus c. Why? Why what? Mm -hmm. just now, why, can, why do you have to, this is a very good example of why you have to do substitution here. And you can't just go straight and say, oh, the integral of that is sine of 5x, right? Because the solution actually has a constant in front of it. So if you didn't do substitution, your answer would have been incorrect if you just say sine of 5x. Why? Because you're missing the one fifth in front. Divide by five? Well, in this case, not not all the steps will be the same for every problem, but for this case, I knew I had to divide by five because I needed dx by itself. On the previous problem, the one that has two x, let me go back to it. This one. Right here, I needed the whole 2x dx, because that's how the question was written. So when I took the derivative of u, right here, I just have to take the dx to the right side for convenience. So then once I got 2x dx, I just left it alone. And I didn't do anything else with the 2 or with the x. I just left it there. Why? Because this is what I needed because that was the question. So it depends on the question. Okay, sometimes we leave it alone, we stop right here, and we just substitute du. Sometimes we will have a number on our way that we have to somehow move around, okay? Let's do another example. Like I said, the more I do, the, the better you will understand. It will, it will eventually make sense to you. Um, okay, do we have one here on the bottom? Oh, that's it, right? Yes? Okay. Alright, so let's go to the next slide. Now this one here, let me see on my notes. Four. Okay. So what would you guys say u is? One third x minus eight. Yeah. So what's inside the parentheses? Don't worry about the exponent five. Don't worry about it yet. Just one third x minus 8. That's it. Now, what is du dx? Squared. Not integration. One over three. Just 1 over 3. That's it. We're taking derivative, remember? Okay. So the derivative of this part right here is just 1 third x to the power of 0. So that y is just 1 third. And then what's the derivative of negative 8? 0. Okay. Now, we look at the problem, and it looks really weird, right? So let's rewrite it. This is going to be the integral of 1 over 1 third x minus 8 to the power of 5. And then dx is here. Yeah? Do you guys see how the dx was on the numerator? Mm -hmm but it's equivalent to what I just wrote on the right side of the equal sign. Okay, now from there, um, we're going to 
say the following. Um, we're going to substitute and say 1 over, instead of this part right here, we're going to call it u. u to the power 5. Isn't it easier to integrate 1 over u to the power 5? You'll see how easy it is in a minute. So now we do that, but then we still need to somehow make up for this dx. Where are we going to get that from? Well, we look over here, and let's see what we could do. Okay? So what I'm going to do is cross multiply. Stay with me. So the dx is dividing on the left. I'm going to take it to the right side. This and the 3 is dividing on the right. So if I take it to the left, what is it going to do? From dividing, multiply. So then we get this. 3 times dx. U. I'm sorry. U. 3 times du equals 1 times dx. Right? Yeah? Are you guys okay with that? I just took this dx to the left, so now it's multiplying. I took the 3 to the left, now it's multiplying. Okay, so now can you guys imagine what we're going to substitute dx with? This dx. What should I write instead of dx? 3 right du. So that is substituted with 3 du. Okay, now I'm going to simplify it a little bit. So this 3 could be here, and then we could have u to the power, if I move this exponent up to the numerator, it will be u to the power negative pi. And then we have du right here. Now right here, this 3, we could take it outside of the integral, factor it out, and then we just have this. Now we could use that formula where we add 1 to the exponent. So that would be 3 times u to the power, what is negative 5 plus 1? Negative 4. And then we divide by the same exponent, negative Four. And then what am I missing? Plus, what am I missing, Bastion? Was it Bastion or Oleg? The one for Bastion. So let's see. Okay. Now that looks kind of weird, so if that wasn't any of your answers, we could say negative three fourths u to the power negative four plus c, or we could also say negative three fourths or negative three divided by or u to the power positive 4, and then plus c. Yes, let's do that actually. Almost forgot. So then the answer could be, which one do you guys like to substitute? So uh, I kind of like this one. So it will be negative 3 fourths of, what was u? Uh, one third x minus eight. Minus eight. X what? Minus, minus eight? eight. Yeah. X to the first power? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that is to the power negative four plus C. Yeah. Okay. Now remember if it was three response, you don't need to simplify. Like I did here and here, you could just do your back substitution straight there. All right? But if it's a multiple choice and your answer is not there, then it's because either you have it wrong or because it's simplified in a different way. All right? So let's do the next one. So it seems that what we're going to cover, oh no, we have class tomorrow's Friday, right? Mm -hmm. yeah? Okay. So let's see. This one here, it looks a little bit weird. Because it also has the dx there, right? But now you know how to rewrite it so it looks a little friendlier. 
So let's do that first. So the integral of 1 over 1 plus 3x squared dx, just like that. And I think you know very well what u is going to equal to. Right? What is u? Plus 3x squared. 3x squared. Mm -hmm. Okay, now if that is u, then du dx is going to be 6x. That's it. Or we could also say du is equal to 6x dx. But let's see which one is the, the one we need. So we go back, we look at the problem, and it seems like we're just going to need a substitution for dx, right? Okay. So then here, you look at all these options, right? But none of those work. So what do we need to do? We need to isolate dx. So this will be du. What is the 6x we want to get? Multiply. Multiply, so there you go. Okay. So let's substitute. And so right here we are going to have the integral of 1 over u. And then we're going to have, um, instead of dx, so we're going to have du over 6x. So that doesn't make sense, right? Because now we have u and we have x. So let me look at the book. This number four, right? Five? Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, so this is all wrong. All right, so that's one of the ways you will figure out, Dima, put your point away you will figure out that you, you're, you're doing something wrong because somehow I ended up with u and I ended up with x and that's just wrong. So what, did that, what that tells me is that I made a bad choice by choosing u to be the whole denominator. It's just, it's just one plus three words. So for some reason on the book, so think about the quiz you just took. Aren't some of those like some uh -huh, like some yeah, the ones that have the like inverse, that. right? The ones that have one over and then one plus x squared. Yeah, they have or one something one. like that. So we're gonna go around those rounds. So let's see. Uh let's erase from here. So instead of choosing the whole denominator to be u, we're only gonna focus on the three x squared part. Okay, so because of that, instead of choosing um, u equals 3x squared, we're going to use u equals the square root of 3x. So imagine that this was another letter. Let's think about W. I just like W. 3x squared. And then we say that U is going to be the square root of both of those. We can do it. So why do we do that? So that we don't have that 6 involved. Can we also just do 1 plus 3x and square it? I don't know, Sean. I'm following the book. But okay. I didn't know what to do. So maybe. Okay. What was the question again? What I just asked? Yes. Okay. Say it again. If you can just do 1 plus 3x and not do any worry about the square. No, we still have to care about the square. Okay. Now, if we had parentheses right here, I would have said right away u is 1 plus 3x. 
Okay, now we do that, so then we're saying w uh, square root of that, so that will be u, so the square root of 3x. Give me a second. I'm sorry. No, no. Okay, so if we take, I know I'm going to confuse you. So if we take the square root of the whole thing, it will be the square root of 3 times the square root of x squared. That's, that's what I mean. So here the square root cancels with the square. So we're going to say u is equal to the square root of 3. This one will stay inside the radical. And then the x will be just outside the root. All right. So we don't use u equals to the square root of 3x? Uh, the x will be outside. So the square root of 3, yes, and then the x will be out there. So like the square root of 3 is the coefficient of the x. All right, so now we take the derivative of u from here. Look at this one. What was the derivative? It's very easy. One. Not one. One times one time square root of three. That's it. Like if you have a function that is 2x, what's the derivative? Just 2, right? The coefficient. So if we have the square root of 3 times x, the derivative is just the square root of 3. Okay. Satadima. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> okay, we're almost done with this one and then we'll stop at the end of this one. Um, okay, so you guys know that we're going to need dx, right? You guys were already good at that part. So let's not lose that skill. So we take the dx across. So now we have du equals the square root of 3 dx. But what do we need to substitute in the problem? Only dx. So then dx stays here. And then we divide. So du over the square root of 3. Now, for notation purposes, I'm going to write 1 over the square root of 3 times du. Just like the one that we did with the 1 fifth. You guys remember? That you might ask me why to do that? Well, because I just need dx. I don't need square root of 3 times dx. Okay. Now, this is going to confuse you guys. Okay, so get ready. Remember how we chose u to be the square root of 3 times x, right? So what happens if I square both sides? Get 3x squared. So I will get 3x squared, very good. Because you will distribute the exponent to the square root of 3, so we'll cancel the square root, and then x raised to the second power, just x squared. Okay. Now, why do I need to do that? Well, because here on the substitution, I'm going to say the integral of 1 over 1 plus mu squared. This part right here, this part right here is mu squared. Not just u, mu squared. Right here. Okay, so that's why I didn't just substitute u. I substituted u squared. Okay? Don't worry. You can watch this video when you get home. <laughs> okay, and then uh, for dx, we already agreed that we were going to substitute that dx with all the stuff from here. Yes? Are you guys with me? Yeah. Okay. 
Well, what was it? I forgot. Well, I oh. went over this for the DU. DU, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, that, this constant here, I'm going to factor it out of the integral. Okay, so factor out the 1 over the square root of 3, and then we have the integral of 1 over 1 plus u squared du. And then you cannot tell me that you don't know what that is because you just took a quiz. Tangent inverse. What is that? So 1 over the square root of 3. The answer for this part is going to be tangent inverse of u plus c. Whoa. Then we go back, substitute u, so that we leave our answer in terms of x. So 1 over the square root of 3 tangent inverse of the square root of 3 x plus c. That was a tough problem. I'm not gonna lie. It was. Okay. So um, we'll leave it here for today. So this was section 5.3 part 1.